Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Botts of the Technical Trader, techtrader.com. It is well, Saturday the 13th, and this is the weekend webinar. Looks like the market's had a pretty uneventful week. As a matter of fact, in the last month, if you take a look at the S&P 500, it's been in a trading range. After running back up from over 3,800 to about 4,200, they backed off and have been in trading range. As a matter of fact, narrowing in a kind of a wedge. Particularly the last six, seven days, you can see we've been in a range between 4,100 and 4,150. It's very narrow. And so we're about to get a movement. Um, and it's a key support at 4,000 <clears throat> and uh, let's say 4,850. When we get below that, we're going to test the trend line. But above it, we have a chance of testing the double top key resistance right now, 4,186.88. Get above that, we're looking at 4,325.50. And above that, 4,500. That's the S&P. Here's the Nasdaq 100. <clears throat> Even stronger, we broke out of that trading range slightly. Um, for, uh, believe it or not, it was a down day on Friday. Dropped uh, about a third of a percent. But you can see that the lateral price resistance upwards of 14,200. Beyond that, we're looking at 15,100 to 200, maybe more. But for now, let's see if we, now that we've broken the decline top sign after a five wave decline at a base and a breakout, it's like a new, obviously new uptrends in place. This is the key number for me, 13,685. That's where you got to get through to really get this market run. However, the transportations and small cap stocks are not cooperating. You can see how they're still in downtrends off of the three wave big move up. We're off the October low. And so the IW, excuse me, the Dow Jones 20 transportation index go from just under 12,000 to near 16,000 at 15,888. So uh, almost a 4,000 point run. And then the pullback of about a 50% Fibonacci retracement with a double bottom in here. Um, until the mark, the Dow Jones transportation gets above 14 to 285, 143 above there, I'm not going to be happy. And this could still be um projected lower and so in basic dow theory forecasts when the transportation is not confirming the industrials of course it's all old school thought but still that's the rule then we don't have a confirmed uptrend you look at the small caps obviously in the same mode as the transportations unable to get back above 180 81 where it's going to have to do to uh to take this out and turn it around uh, there's a double bottom support at 167.8 beneath that 163. Um, the underlying technicals are showing that the McClellan oscillator, which had gotten to plus 180 or so, 185 to be exact, about five, six weeks ago, it's gotten down to minus 60. Um, the low, recent low was minus 124. So we're in negative territory and um, I'm certainly not anywhere overbought, that's for sure. The market has room to bounce here. The percentage of um, stocks above their 40 are less than half. Matter of fact, only two-fifths of stocks, 40%, are above their 40-day moving average, not exactly uh, warming the cargoes of my heart, technically. I'm uh, meaning that I, I, just, I just don't see the underlying technical confirming a bull phase yet. We're going to have to get that above 50 to get it going. Then to get it really overbought, we get it, get it in the plus 80, 85 range up here. So we're nowhere in there overbought, kind of neutral right now. The VIX, which hasn't done anything for a long time, is let's take a look at the trading range. Now, for the last two and a half years, the VIX has been trading between um, 15 and 37. And right now, it's closer to 17. Now, extreme fear is up there. This is more like closer to apathy. But we've seen much lower ratings, matter of fact, 10, 11, and even as low as eight or nine. So this has room to drop further, and the market has room to go further. According to this, that's the interpretation. And taking a look at the um, major components, Apple, and a phenomenal uptrend of late. Look at the January low on Apple, 124. Recent high, 174. 50 points, or about 40% move in Apple. It's just this year since January. So obviously, one of the reasons why the component has been um, 
at least in a much more bullish mode than it could have been if Apple hadn't done this. Amazon, despite the pop island reversal and pullback, it's now back up across the decline tops line. Even if I drew it wrong, it's still above that line. It appears. See it? So we've broken out, but we have not gotten to the spike high in early February. Amazon's high was 114 then. On Thursday, we had 113.28. So this is kind of resistance up here. If we can get through it, we got to move to 118.19 and 123.4. That's a big resistance level. Nevertheless, still in rising mode along with Apple. What about Microsoft? Well, Microsoft's really strong with a rising flag at the top of the channel and near a double top resistance level. Should we get through that? We have a shot of going up to 340.50 zone on, that, on the Microsoft. Google looks extremely bullish to me with a beautiful long-term decline. One, two, three, four, five ways down. A triple bottom base. A pop to resistance and a four or five week consolidation flag and a breakout. Big week for Google last week. Basically, it went from 105 and change to 118. Um, and you can see that 118, 25 range in here is resistance. Above that, the Google targets is 123 and a quarter. If Google gets through that, then we are in a major bull market. At least that's what it looks like to me. This is a fantastic uh, six month base pattern, a platform, and a breakout. So the, some of the big boys are looking good. Look at it, NVIDIA. No slouch at all, although it was off a little on Thursday and Friday as semiconductors backed up. Still a very powerful rising channel. And if it breaks out, particularly above 292, we may see something in the 325, 345 zone for NVIDIA. What a move considering it was down in October at 108. So certainly a lot of the tech stocks have come off the October lows with abandoned and are showing some pretty strong bullish patterns. Meta, well, that's probably even stronger than anything. Take a look at this. About 88 to 244 in seven months. And yet, it's still holding up beautifully up here. Can't tell you what that's going to do just yet. And Netflix, well, a bit of a lagger, but you can see the last week about that out of the wedge. What it needs now is to get over 350 to really get this running. And the target then is going to be in the mid 370s. But longer term, that's a very powerful long-term move that could at some point get all the way up in a four and a half range. I don't know if it does that, but let's get through of obviously 379.80 first. If we get through 350, I would look for something close to the 379.80. So, I mean, when you look at the leaders in NASDAQ, they're phenomenal charts, indicating to me that unless momentum changes rapidly, that they could all thrust, break out, and take this market even higher. So I um, just want to warn all the bears out there that despite what all the fundamental BS is, the market climbs a wall of worry, and obviously we got two oversold back that, uh, last year. So markets really had a big run since then, and you can see what some of these have done. Uh, one weak link, maybe Tesla, and the reason I say that is although it looked pretty good for a while, this gap down here and pull back to fill that gap and retest the declining 50 with a big negative reversal, having Tesla gone from 177 to 167 and finishing there. That's a nasty reversal bar off resistance. So I'd be really careful with Tesla. As a matter of fact, I, my inclination is Tesla short to at least retest one, um, you know, the mid, low to mid 150s for starters. <laughs> now, should it get up above 179.80, that's a different story. Then your resistance is 188, 189, and we'll just have to see what this wants to do here. But not looking as good as the others, that's for sure. The leading ETFs that we follow, the SMH, a little weaker this week. Um, and basically, without the SMH, it's going to be tough to envision the markets getting a big rally. So this is what I need. Take a look, 125.18. 125.15 and 125.04. We need to get over 125.15.20. We do that, things may change rapidly. That would really confirm any bull move in the market. Let's just say that we got to take that wedge out and not take it out down because if they, you see semiconductors suddenly come down hard, test 118.5 or worse, 
then we are in the negative mode and this is a topping pattern. And then we've already had one, two, three, four, and a truncated fifth wave. But this could be one and two of five, and then we get three, four, and five. So um, at this point, I'm, I'm, I, I consider the SMH neutral bearish. The FAS um, also uh, kind of be neutral bearish. And until I see a successful test of this low here, 52, and even 49, 52 and 49 is support. Um, I need this to be V bottom with a right hand extension and breakout. If you see the FAS the financial get over 59, and my targets are 64, 67, and 75, et cetera. But right now, I am not happy with this pattern. They had a chance right there, but they rolled over hard with the banking crisis, bounced did about a 0.375 FIB retracement, and then back down again. So not the best configuration for the financials as of yet. What about biotechs? Well, an improvement, a big one, is they lagged for a while, but now look at that move up. The XBI has gone from 72.5 to 88, nearly 87.97, and pulled back a little. A sharp rising angle of ascent has me thinking 89 three quarters and maybe 92 and a half as your next targets. Up in that zone, that was a resistance. We did pull back Thursday, Friday, and I would watch XBI support at 83, 90, 95, because then we could test the trend line and the moving averages down there in wave four, one, two, three, and four. We may get a fifth wave. We'll have to just see, but overall, the, the double bottom last year and then the platform and then a retest. It was followed by this bounce. So long pattern. If you look at the overall pattern going back um, a year and a year and a quarter, it's a nice base pattern potential for a big move in biotechs, which I do anticipate, if, especially if we get any kind of a strong market move, you know, in the second half of the year. The LABU, obviously similar, has moved from four and a quarter to seven and a quarter and pull back. Basically looking like this, and you can see it got a little ahead of itself. But has room to back off and retest the net zone. For now, keep you posted on what this looks like. I don't want to see that go below 630, key short-term support in the 62030 zone. Right there. So kind of critical stuff going on with the ETF and leading groups, LABU. FAS and SMH, they're not exactly bullish. So despite the fact that a lot of the Apple, uh, I mean the NASDAQ 100 components like Apple, et cetera, being strong, the semiconductors, financials, and biotechs are not yet giving me any big signals about bull face. We'll have to surge above um, at 125 plus on the SMH, um, spike up and get up above 24 on the FAS. And the XBI wouldn't height if they get if it got above 80, 88, and then started to run some. All right, so that's a look at those ETFs. What about oil? Well, I've been telling you I'm not bullish on oil, and I, I don't like the look. Although this could be a V bottom with a right hand extension, and this back. Note that this gap is about to be filled. It looks like the only way I get bullish if we come up through 65 and start to run. Right now, may have a retest down in the zone in the 58-59 zone. We'll see. But USO and oil are not, are not, you know, not no way bullish to my, in my mind. Um, in, in the gas area, you got UN, which is bounced on Friday, but still has a long way to go. And if you look at coal, that thing came down pretty hard on Friday with a big reversal from uh, 84 to 71. That's a big, big number. Um, and the trend line may have been broken. We'll have to just see if that's the case with the shorter term trend line, which looks like this. So if, if it should break down below, we'll say 67, that'd be a big problem. And then probably the hung and boiler moving up. So that's oil and gas. What about gold? Well, gold looked terrible last week. I mean, look at the rollover. This is just the GDX, but look at the JNUG. 
coming down hard to test support. A break here and gold goes lower. Nugget similar. You can see it's near its moving average as well. So um, if you look at silver, AG even worse. Look at that drop below support on AGQ. Back to secondary support right there, but it's closed below the 50. That's the first time I did that since March. I'm not happy with what I'm seeing in silver, period. So um, that covers the gold and silver look, which isn't pretty. The uh, oil and gas look as well. Let's move on. We got a lot of stocks to cover. And they're all bullish. Take a look at ACHV. How about that chart? I ran to the top of the channel on Thursday, reversed and came down Friday. So it might be um, topping in this area, although I would say it also might be coming down to test the seven range for a uh, test of the trend line. And then the next target's 11. ACLX exploded. That too came down on Thursday and Friday, a reverse thing from nearly 49 to come down to test 40 again. It did bounce a bit, but when you see a long term move like that, let's change the angle a little bit. Sure looks like that was the angle when we hit the top of the channel. Careful with that. ACVA, what a breakout. Um, it was consolidating for two months. It popped it from the little wedge. You take a look at this pattern right there. A little coil or wedge for him. It popped out with a breakaway gap on Thursday. Had inside day Friday. I'm looking for an extension to 19. That's my momentum target. ADMA, also a breakout. First of a multi month coil with a breakaway gap and beautiful follow through on Friday, which indicates to me this is going to five and a half. ALDX. In a rising configuration as well, strong chart. Beautiful pattern. Came down hard and bounced and formed this little wedge. This thing's me. If it gets to the double top, you might go to 12 and uh, three quarters 13 zone. That's my next target. This looks very good. AMAM, this intrigues me. Explodes, falling wedge, explodes, rising coil. If there's a fifth wave, this could be monster time. Way up there. Now, I'm not saying it's going there. Mid range target would be at least in the mid 20s. It's a substantial move. So if this pops out, I'm going swing trade because I think that anything above 13 and this thing can fly. It's thin though. APLS, tech trader swing, popped out, coiled, popped, ran, pulled back, and popped. Not a good day Friday as it reversed. Only down a fraction, but after being up near the high, it backed off. We'll see what this does. My target goes 100. APYX, Apex Medical broke out of a coiling base pattern on Thursday and had beautiful fall through Friday. So in two days, it's gone from 339 to 588. Uh, my near-term target is seven and a half, three quarters. ARCT, beautiful base. Exploded, bull flagged, and popped again. You can see resistance at 33 and three quarters, 33.80. My target is 38 and above. ARDX, beautiful chart. Been up all year and then some since last June. Basically gone from 50 cents to $5, 10, tenfold. And now flagging bullishly. Doesn't look like it's done yet. Not going to be surprised to see the stock get up near eight at some point. ARLO, base breakout wedge. We noted that one. Uh, it then popped. I think we put a swing on this one. Anyway, Friday was a spectacular day for it as it went from 713 to 931. Closed at 901, up 196, a 28% gain. And buying picked up to 7.2 million. Looking at the longer term chart. I'd have to say my I'd have to target somewhere about 10, 10 and a half. Maybe even as high as 11 and a half. Yeah, to retest that high there. ASRT had a one bad day, I believe, on a range report, and they can't look at that comeback. After dipping to four and a half, it ripped to over eight. It's now seven and a half. Looks higher to me. Nine, ten, eleven. Eight tech. Well, nice rising channel. The last two months, two and a half months, it's been consolidating. Key support, 14, resistance, uh, 16 and a half. 
the target would be um, 17 and three quarters, 18 and 19 and a half, 20. At a mirror, we hit a great swing as it popped out. I put a swing on it, it's like 695. Went to nine, uh, 1072. Um, beautiful in less than a week. Now, this pullback could be a buy op. We're going to have to keep an eye on it. But look at the long term decline channel and the key high volume breakaway gap and pullback. It's about a 0.375 Fib retracement. Somewhere in that zone might be an opportunity for a swing back towards 1011. AUPH and a beautiful rising channel. We put a swing on it weeks ago. Um, I believe there, it pulled back. It's consolidating coiling. It made a nominal new high on a week ago, Friday, when it tagged 12.13. Subsequently pulled back to test the trend line of moving average. Next target, 13 and a half, 14. ABDL, ever since this spike bottom and, and uh, coil right there, stock has gone up beautifully. And in the last six, eight months, it's been the slow, steady riser. In the last four or five months before two weeks ago, this stock was in a coiling type consolidation, but it popped right there. Up to the top of the channel, it's consolidating. My next target is 18. Axiom, it's choppy, but it's been pop here and a pop there. And here's another run that I think is going to take this one eventually to 108 10 zone. Let's get it up to resistance right now, which is about 82. We'll get through that, and it's coiling or wedging there. See it. Bluebird, big iron report Friday. It exploded, it coming out of a two-month falling pattern, but it's also at some key, key, key overhead resistance here, all-time highs. So watch it here because if it goes, we're looking at mid 30s, 30 and 35 targets. Bellerophon, pop, falling wedge, it exploded, had a rising flag, and then it popped again, but then pulled back. Right now it's wedging. It looks like a one, two, three, four. If there's a fifth wave, we're looking at 2025 range. This could be big. Keep an eye on BLPH. BMEA, another biotech breaking out there, falling wedge, a slow steady rise up, forming a coil. This spike high was 36.68. It recently reached 35.89. If we break out, we could run into the mid to high 40s. Kaba, with a big run from October when it was trading at half a buck, reaching the near 13 range. Then it took a few months to consolidate coil, breaks out again. Currently, that's a rising flag of sorts. Next target is 16. Caladidas Therapeutics, nice. Two months after popping and breaking out of the base, it's been coiling in an ascending bull coil. My target is at 27, 30 going forward. Sea Bay, pop, consolidate for four or five months. Here's your breakout. From that point, it's gone from four and a half to 11, 11.20. You can see the rising configuration I'm looking for now, 13 and a half. CGNT, tech traded swing, I put a pop on when it popped out. It's consolidating and sometimes they do that. They break out of a base and coil or flag. It's a nice setup. My targets are five, five and three quarters and six and a half. Coco, that's by the Coco company, beautiful rising chart, beautiful. New all-time highs on Friday near 25. The target's 28 and three quarters. CRBP, long decline, very long decline. That's a re reverse put stock, by the way. Breakout, pull back, pop again, and pull back and wedge. I think that's what's forming right there. If we pick that wedge, we're going to look at 13 again as a target, and then maybe 17, 18. CRISPR exploded, finally pulled back at the end of the week. But the move that took this one from 47.60 to 71.20, 24 points in a week, uh, was pretty spectacular. Now let's see if it backs and fills and sets up for a move to 75. Carvana had its big move with breakaway gap. We put a swing on it and a pullback and really ran nicely from nine and change to 13.70. And now the pullback. Last couple of days, pull it right back to support at the breakout point. It really needs to hold there. If it doesn't, your next support is nine and a half. CBRX, check out this chart. So it imploded and bounced sharply and then pulled back and formed the coil. It broke out of the coil and look at that bull flag. For me, the targets have to be 14 and a gap fill of 16 and three quarters. Those are your targets. Watch this flag for a pop and breakout. DraftKings broke out and we gave a swing on it and then pulled back for a flag pattern forming nicely. My next target is 28. DMRC, Digimark breaking out of a base. 
Thursday with a follow through Friday. Once he gets to 28, my target's 32. Good momentum. EDIT broke out. I put a swing on it. It flagged and broke out again. It's consolidating. Next target, 12 and 14. ELF, one of the most spectacular stocks on Wall Street. From May of last year at 20 to April of this year, 11 months, to 97. Um, and now flagging bullishly. Next target, 105, 110. ETNB has been in a beautiful rising channel all year. Broke out of a wedge there, a flag there, and popped there and won a little wedge and now a larger coil. Broke out of the coil and backed off a little bit. My next target is 22 and a half, 23 and a half, if it continues its trend. New EVLB popped out of a beautiful year long base on Thursday, and then Friday got the resistance and backed off. But overall, I'm expecting the next test on this one to be up here near eight. Fluence, nice rising channel, but on a slow ascent. It was a good week last week as it broke back out. My target's at 27 and 32. First solar, spectacular day on Friday as it jumped from 184 to 234 for 50 points. Finished 234.02 up 50.83. That's a monster day for that stock. Monster broke through everything. New multi multi year highs. My target now is 260. Let's see where it goes from there. GANX, this low price biotech popped out and flagged and exploded and wedged. Looking for six and three quarters, seven. GSIT, what else can I say except what a trade on Friday? Stock was from a dollar 67 to 810 in one day. Yep, and it did it at 116, 17 million shares. And it closed at the upper end of the range, and even after hours ran some more. So it's one of those stocks where you just don't know where it's going to go. It's out of control. The next target has to be nine ish, close to this area there. But be careful. You may want to put tight stuff. Here's your after hours, one minute chart. Four o'clock close. Incredible stuff. Now, if there's a follow through and it follows that path, you can see why I say nine, nine and a half um, might still be doable on a follow through. Stay tuned. Be careful though. HLIT, check out the spike um, Tuesday and then the three day flag. I think it goes higher. 17 and 19 are targets. Harrow. Well, this is one of my top picks of the year. It did so well for so long, but it got slam dunk last week. From the Wednesday high of 28 and a quarter to Friday's low of 2011, it got slammed. The breakaway gap on Friday, right down to the trend line and lateral price support. It cannot go any lower. If it bounces on weak volume, exit the stock. IDYA. <clears throat> First of all, it popped out and wedged and popped out again and pulled back near the breakout point. If this has any momentum at all, 24 and a half to 28 are targets. IFRX, big, big, big move early April and then a hard pullback. A little bit of a rising channel and retest. We got a double bottom there and we got resistance right where it is. We get through here, six, seven and a half, nine, all potential targets again if this blows. I think it might. IKNA, nice chart. Breaks out, pops up, flags. Next target, I got to go with nine. IMGN, tech trade a new swing after it popped. Boy, I had a feeling this was going to really be strong. Take a look at that flag. And if it gets, breaks out of here, you may see, um, you know, uh, 17, 18, 20 even as a possibility. IMTX popped out of an inverse head and shoulder with a breakaway right there. Ran up to resistance, backed off and flagged. We have support at nine and a quarter. Resistance at ten and a half. Your targets are eleven and three quarters and thirteen. IMVT, one of my top picks of the year, popped and broke out two weeks ago. Last week was a pullback consolidation week, retesting week. Uh, did it on low volume. I like it. Double top here twenty. Twenty and a quarter. Next target twenty four. INOD, big week last week, popped. We consolidated for three days and popped on Friday again and broke out. So I'm looking for a quick move to 11 on this one. In test, look at this chart. From 7 to 24, or there about 23 and three quarters. Double top, 
double bottom trend line, but it break through the double top here, targets the 26 and a half and 30. INZY, beautiful multi wave move, one, two, three, four, five. This is wave one and two, this is three and four. The fifth wave, if it if it extends, and right now it did back off. It looks like a rising, top of a rising flag here. So we get through that rising flag, we're going to see seven and a half and nine and a half. Chinese stock giant group. I just had to show this to you because it is a pretty powerful move underway. And my target's going to be seven and a half, but it's currently 562. Keep an eye. Joby ran up to resistance Friday and backed off. The overall chart pattern breaking out of the wedge is solid. I'm just not happy with the pullback on Friday, but sometimes you back off the neckline. This hasn't broken out yet, but it does look like a left shoulder, head, and right shoulder complex. Um, so let's see if this is able to go. And if it does go, it targets a six and seven. KALV broke out um, week before last and continued last week. My net extension targets are 10 and a half and 13. LI popped on strong earnings and then has a two day consolidation. I like to look, I think 32, 33, and maybe 35, six may be doable. MAXN breaks out of a six month consolidation with a breakaway gap, pulled back and wedged, ran up and retested the 50, created a trend line. Thursday was a monster pop. It went from 27 to 37, and then followed through to get up to almost 39 before backing off on Friday, but my target is 44.5. MGNI broke out last week. Old favorite of mine. Big pop, falling wedge, and popped to the target, then a pullback. Broke through support, but broke, but based out and broke out again. So my target is 14. About an, uh, enable. Breaks out, wedges, pops, pulls back and retests. Runs up to the triple top and stalls right there. So watch this one next week if it gets to 14. Then I'm looking for uh, 15 and a half, 16, maybe 17 and a half. Neo, beautiful chart, one, two, three, four, fifth waves underway. I have targets at 22, 24 and a half, and 28. Nerve breaks out of a base, wedges, and explodes to the resistance. It backed off on Friday, but if it gets to this nine, eight and a half area, we might see 12, 11 and 13. Nanox, star of the month so far. Breaks out, puts a swing on it here, folks, at 965. You can see 2150, about 130% in about a week and a half. Uh, I'll take it up every day since that, except for this one little stall day. And the extension target is 28. I'm not sure it gets there, but if it gets above Friday's high, 21 and a half, look out. OCUP, beautiful rising channel. Pull back, retest, and now pop right back to the highs again. If it gets through here, Eight dollar target, seven and a half, three quarters. OMER broke out, pull back and retest it. Broke out, falling wedge. It looks like a one, two, three, four, five wave. One, two, three, and four. The fifth wave is started. And it gets through six and a half. I'm looking for seven and a half and nine. ONON broke out, pull back, we put a swing on it. It's moved up nicely. It held support here. Uh, the rising channel says we go higher. 37 and 41 targets. OPRA, a phenomenal rising channel from 4 to 13 the last you know, eight or nine months, but look at the angle of the sense at the top of the channel and lateral resistance, but the target is 15. PACB, multiple tops here. So this has got to get up through the 12 and a half area. Should it do that? 14 and three quarters and 18 are targets. It could get there quickly too. Take a look at that move. Palantir, strong report, broke out with a breakaway gap above the moving averages and through price support resistance to get to that spike high in February. Here's the double top. Watch it next week. Above 10 and a half is rock and roll time. 11 and a half, 13 and a quarter or more. PPSI explodes out of a base. It goes nonstop from two and a half to 690. Pulls back on wedges. Friday wasn't a great day for it, but it's still within the wedge. If it should pop, 645, I would look for eight bucks. PRG, one, two, three, four, five, maybe. This could be one, two, and then three, four, five. I would still look for 34 and 37. PTGX, sending bull wedge with multiple tops and resistance there. 
to 26, the targets at 29 and 32. REOI breaks out of a base and has a steady run up, pulls back to test. That is now your support right there. And that would be about 16. We get through 18 and three quarters and look at what 20 and a half, 21 and a half, 22. Rembus has been in a phenomenal rising channel with a multiple one, two, three, four, five wave move and then break out and an extension. I have a target at 59. We'll see if it gets there. Ryovan, one of my top picks of the year, ran up nicely, pulled back, and, is, and has a little inverse head and shoulders or cup and handle, whatever you want to call it, it broke out. And then it pulled back. Let's see if it can extend. $10 target followed by 12. RVP broke out of a six month coil. And it's been running ever since. I've been gone from uh, about three and three quarters to nine and a quarter and double topping there before pulling back. Should we get up through that level? I look for 11 and a half, three quarters. SANA breaks out and flags and then pops again. My target seven and a half and eight and a half. SCPH. Long base breakout, hard pullback, held the trend line, ran up and flagged and popped. Pull back and popped again. Right now I got a target at 14. Shopify, beautiful. Since the October low, rising one, two, three, four, and five waves. But I don't think it's done. I'm looking for 70 to 75 zone. SPRY, monster explosive move on Friday on drug news. 533 to 965, finishes 635 up 383, only 85%. On 63 million shares. It's actually below the double top, um, but you know, you're looking at if it gets to that range, something in the low teens. STNE breaks out of a long base, this is South American software stock, it forms a flag. Looking for 15 and 17. Tabula, which was a tech trader swing here, after breaking out of that wedge there, it ran up beautifully from two and a half to four and a quarter, and then pulled back in a falling wedge. Look at the breakout Wednesday, inside day, Friday, follow through Wednesday, inside day, Thursday, follow through Friday, and then backed off a little bit. Uh, your target and scalp target on this one is 345, but if you get to that, back to four and a quarter, four and a half or more. Eventually, five and a half. Thread up. Broke out, surged, and backed off Thursday, Friday. Um, my target remains four and four and three quarters. Support 240, 45. TERN, one of my top picks of the year, continues to press, impress too. Popped and flagged and then stair stepped its way higher. With a flag there and now a little bit of a coil there. Should it pop out and then retest 14? We should, we could get to 17, 18. Technoglass, it's been on my list for months now. It's gone from 28 to 46, 7. Recent high 48 and a half. Right there, any move above that, it's a 53 54 dollar start. TGTX powerful base breakout. We put a swing on it when it popped right there uh, in the um, 9 10 zone. It's made it up to 35 and change, and it doesn't look done. Quite frankly, 40 and 45 are continual targets. We'll see. Tonight, breaks out of a nice base, popped and wedged. I noted that a couple weeks ago. It broke out of that wedge, pulled back, and then tried to retest the highs. So there's resistance there at 790. The target is 10. TPH, TriPoint Homes, what this builder's stock has gone from under 15 to 30, more than doubled. And doesn't look done yet, but there is some resistance up here, although I believe that's a new all time high. Travels do, breaks out of a base, pops the resistance and target around eight and a half and pulls back, but boy, this is strong. I got targets at 10 and a quarter and 11 and a half. Uber broke a falling wedge into lateral price resistance with a breakaway gap, ran up, and now we're at a rising flag, looks higher. 40 and 45, 46 are my near-term targets. I believe long-term is much bigger. UIS popped, pulled back in a falling wedge. We gave you a swing there, and then made a new high on Friday, and it ran a nice high at 479, but that's not a pretty reversal. Where did it reverse from? If you take a look at this spike high and that gap in there, now that is key resistance for the stock around 475.80. Get to that, we're looking at six dollars still. Vector um, broke out of a long seven eight month base, popped, 
wedged and broke out again. Next target is up here at 17, 17 and a half. Good chart. Viking, breakaway gap, coil. We put a swing on it. That worked. From eight and three quarters, nine, it's made it and tripled. The high on Friday was a new high of 24.11, which is right near where the high was back in 2018 to 24 even. So although we made a nominal new high, it um, is still at resistance here. Should we break through that? We're looking at high 20s. BRNA, one of my top picks of the year, pop, pull, pull back, broke out after flagging, spike, flag, and it's trying to come out here. What it really needs is a pop across here. Take that up about 20, above 24, we're on our way to high 20s, low 30s. Voyager popped out of its base, spiked, and has two inside days. I love the stock over 11.50 if it gets there. Then, it, but then we're looking at 14. WW, fantastic swing trade as it popped and pulled back, put a swing on it in the 695 area or something like that. Uh, a, week, a couple weeks later, it made it up to 10 for 50% pop. But boy, this came down hard, very hard this week and broke support. Careful on this one. Key secondary support is six. That's drop dead stop. XPON, spike, pull back, spike, pull back, and run up and retest and reverse. Now the coil was broken, as you can see. And it moved up nicely until Friday when it backed up to test the trend line. The target says seven and nine if it does go. YMAB exploded, coiled, broke out of that, and went vertical from uh, 568 to reach almost 11, basically 1066, and nearly doubled in a week. A little pullback on lower volume looks pretty good. Let's see if it sets up a wave four, as this is one, two, three. If we get a four, the fifth wave could take us into the low to mid teens. That is it, folks, for the longs. I got a few shorts to cover and we'll finish up for today. I'm not keen on being short here. I know that everyone else is bearish. I am not. Doesn't mean that certain things out there aren't shortable, like APA. I said this is a bear flag. It came down hard. I said short, any bounce that doesn't get back up to resistance, boom, right back down again. If this breaks the triple bottom, I don't know if that's going to be the case, but I wouldn't be shocked if something mid 20s on this. BOX, now that's a breakaway gap and a bear flag, period. Tech trader short uh, should be a 22 and a half and 20. CF breaks down, forms a bear wedge, another rising wedge. It's a one, two, three, four. The fifth way is underway at support, but the secondary target would be down there at about 55. Bottom of the channel says at least 59. Clearfield, ever since it broke and formed that bear coil, I was bearish, 64 to 30. Bounced. I don't know if it's done yet. It's pretty bearish short. Capri, tech trader short. Came down hard and formed the bear coil. What else can I say? 49 to 36 and a half. A little bounce. But I got to tell you, this doesn't really bounce in here. It starts to roll over. This could be could plunge to the low 30s. DDS looks like a topping pattern. That's a bear wedge. That's a bear flag, and it's starting to get weak. Target 255 and 225. Tech trader swings short in the oil sector. Dino Sinclair Oil came down from the bear wedge there, broke down, and dropped from the high 40s to the high 30s. I don't think it's done yet. DVN, same thing. Came down, bear flag. Rolled over hard and had a rising wedge. Broke down and it's rolling over. It takes out support at 44 and three quarters. This stock could be in the high 30s. Floor, that's a bear flag and it broke down. Right now I'm looking for something in the 22, 24 zone. Keys, breakaway gap, another bear wedge. And then another blood break and another bear flag or wedge. My target? 13032. Uh, NFE break, breaks the top, forms a rising bear wedge. Comes down, forms a bear flag. Looks like a 1, 2, 3, 4, doesn't it? If this breaks 27, my target is 2122. <coughs> Overstock's been on my list for a year <clears throat> since it was in the 50s. It's come down to the teens. It doesn't look like anytime soon we're going to see the stock make a major move. Next target is 14. Prestige uh, Consumer Healthcare. 
broke down, rising wedge, and now it's coming down again. If it breaks here, you should see 54. You may see 48.9. Plexus came down hard, rising wedge. I said that's a short at 100. It's dropped down, folks, to 83. My target is 77. Tech target, big decline, ugly chart. Broke down from the rising bear flag and broke down from another one and broke down again. It's just ugly. It's gone from 50 to 28 just since I noted it. VICR came down hard, formed a bear flag. I put a short on it. I'm still short this stock. My targets are 35 and 28. And finally, VTLE, another oil stock, um, broke down. Formed a bear wedge, ran it up again and roll over. Look, I'm, I'm not going to be happy until I see the stock at 29. That's my target. But my near-term target is 37. So 37 and 29. That's it, folks. That's it for the complete weekend review of the indices, the components, the ETFs that we follow closely. Obviously, a list of uh, nearly 100 longs and about 30 shorts. Folks, that's it for today. Have a great weekend. Study this. Make sure you got some ideas for next week or at least are prepared with knowledge about where some of these stocks are, what they look like, where support and resistance lies. That's the key to trading. And this is HP signing off. Have a great weekend.